the Big Bang. A hot, uniform gas expands out and cools, becoming the cosmic microwave background we see today. From there, stars, clusters, and galaxies come into being, creating our known universe. But wait, if this gas is so uniform, what's with all these hot and cool regions? What were those first galaxies like anyway? And speaking of galaxies, where are the current ones headed in the midst of all this expanding space? These questions can be addressed by something called the Sinyal Zeldovich effect. The yes, the effect is when cosmic microwave background photons are distorted after passing through a galaxy cluster. This is mainly done through an effect called inverse Compton scattering, where a high energy electron collides with a photon, scattering it to a higher frequency. When the C and B photons interact with the hot gas in the center of the galaxies, the energetic electrons inverse Compton scatter them and shift the photon spectra. This shift, resulting from the thermal energy of the gas, is called thermal SC. You can think of it like these kernels dropped into hot oil. While we would normally view them as unpopped, after interacting with the electrons in the hot gas, they reach us scattered. But this isn't the only shift that's observed. If the galaxy happens to be moving towards or away from us, the photons are Doppler shifted while they're being scattered. This is called kinematic, or kinetic SC, which causes a separate frequency shift, but one that can be 20 times fainter than the thermal SC and still stack with it. And the thermal SC is already hard to detect, with electrons only having a 1% chance of colliding with the CMB photon. But if scientists could better isolate these two effects, they might be the keys to learning more about the early universe and even mapping out dark energy. Perhaps the most important characteristic of the SE effect is that it's the same for galaxies at any distance. This means that scientists can get a better sampling of older galaxies which have been drastically redshifted, where previous samples have been biased toward the biggest and brightest. Scientists can use the KSC to measure the peculiar velocity of galaxies, but isolating it from the thermal effect has been a challenge. We can try measuring at a frequency at around 218 GHz, but sometimes the effect is so faint for smaller clusters we can't detect it. In this case, we need more data so that we can find something called the mean pairwise momentum, a value which should be negative, signifying the galaxies are moving towards each other. If the deviation from zero is great enough in the negative direction, then yay, we successfully measured the KSC. It's theorized that these galaxies and the clusters they are in follow dark energy paths, and so by being able to map out their motions, we can have a better idea of where these paths exist and how they function. So hopefully, this shift in photons will lead to a shift towards a better understanding of the universe.